Hi everyone. I'm already having fun with my my client here. We were just having a bit of a laugh before this uh, recording. So I think you'll enjoy this video. I'm with one of my clients, Marina Smerling, and re really looking forward to introducing uh, her to all of you and having her share some of her, the wisdom she's gained in building her coaching business and also the kind of wisdom she offers to um, her clients. So first of all, hi Marina. Hi, George. It's so lovely to be here with you. Yeah, thanks for doing this. Mm. It's, uh, I know it's late over there for you right now, so thanks for uh, staying up for this. Mm. Um, so let me first give everybody a context of what you do, and I'll just kind of read your official bio, cool. and then we'll kind of go from there. Um, Marina is a life and relationship coach, and she has supported hundreds of women in creating thriving relationships that are founded on radical self-acceptance. And I'll, maybe I'll have you talk a bit about what that means or to you. Uh, Marina supports women in working through their intimate relationship challenges, composting their underlying feelings of shame into radical self-love, and saying yes to what brings them joy. Marina's work draws upon over a decade of training in NVC, nonviolent communication, as well as the Hakomi methods, mindfulness and somatic based approach to transformation and also non-dual spiritual practice. There's so much we can talk about <laughs> here. <laughs> we, we, we might, we might uh, uh, tip, uh, dip our toe into some of this stuff because okay. there's so much here. Um, but anyway, I, I, love, I love the work you do. Um, but let's start, given that most of the folks watching this uh, are, are working on building their own business of some kind. Um, some of them are just starting out and some of them are further along. Mm -hmm. um, maybe you can share, given that you have a, a fairly successful coaching practice. So what have you learned uh, in building this? And there's, yeah, I'll just kind of let you share what's, what's coming to you. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, first, I just want to say hello to all of my fellow entrepreneurs and risk takers. It's nice to feel your companionship through the the, uh, the Facebook ether. Yeah. Um, and this is yeah. going to be on YouTube as well. So ah, and the YouTube ether. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> good. 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 Um, yeah. You know, for me, the biggest thing that I have learned about um, doing business, daring to do what I love and attempt to make a living doing what I love is, um, it's funny, I want to describe it as being a little bit crazy. <laughs> oh, and there's this fabulous um, blast of thunder here in the background in Florida as I say that. Oh, that was great. Um, Perfect. Yes. <laughs> being a little bit crazy in the sense of taking chances, uh, taking risks, doing things that your logical brain says, uh, like, no way in heck should you do that. You're going to mortify yourself. <laughs> I'm not, you know, um, intentionally advocating for public humiliation, but I really think that uh, being in business means risking humiliation. It means risking being disliked, um, risking, you know, so-called making a fool of yourself, risking rubbing folks the wrong way. Like every day of my work that I, that I do something that's public, it could be as simple as a public Facebook post, um, sending a newsletter out into the unknown and not having any clue how it's going to be received. I have to face the possibility of being judged, ridiculed, disliked, et cetera, and yet doing it anyway because there's something that's so important in me that wants to come through even it's just, if it's just for one or two people who um, are going to be moved and impacted by it. But when I say being crazy, I mean really cultivating a willingness to take risks as a way of life in order to um, let whatever gifts you have inside of you come through. I don't, I have, maybe there is a path that's safe, but I sure as heck have not found that path. And um, that's the biggest piece that I've learned and I want to advocate to others is like, please, please be willing to take risks in order to let whatever the precious gift inside of you is in order to allow that to come through. Oh, I'm so glad you started there because oh, <laughs> I, I don't think we can hear it enough. I don't think I can hear it enough. Mm -hmm. uh, and those, 
watching this, please feel free to comment below and uh, let us know what you think about that. Um, it's interesting you talk about the safe path because I think so many of us, yes, we know that entrepreneurship is risky. Um, you know, sometimes people think, well, entrepreneurship is risky because you might lose money or something like that. But mm -hmm. you're right. It's not a, the most, <laughs> That's the least of those building an authentic business. We're not just like mm -hmm. doing something purely logical or cognitive based and like, oh, this mm -hmm. is a good financial investment. We are investing our souls into this thing. That's um, right. And, and therefore, we're investing our sense of identity also in some way. Yeah. Like we're, we're revealing ourselves and what if people don't like that? Yeah, it's um, inherently vulnerable. So how do you deal with that? Mm. <laughs> you, do that you do that regularly, and I hope folks will read your, um, your writings. Uh, I'll put a link, of mm. course, to um, your Facebook page and your blog. It's a uh, beautiful writing. But how do you deal with that? Yeah. Oh, Lord, this is the million dollar question. Um, yeah, I know there's so much here, but give us a, no, little, bit of, a little bit of uh, flavor of how, yeah. how you work through a little bit of that. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Um, to be totally honest, a large part of it is for me cultivating um, a sense of connection with the divine and that comes in many forms for different people, whether it's God or Jesus or Moses or, you know, the universe or your dog. Maybe, you know, you, I love my dog a lot. Like my dog could be my God, like whoever or whatever it's, it's it just, is. It's just God spelled the other exactly. way. Exactly. Right? So many forms of the divine. Uh, so many legs. Um, but really cultivating a sense of um, purpose and a sense of, something or someone has got my back and really for me letting myself learn to trust that in my bones is what allows me to take these risks day after day after day um having a sense that in the end you know if everybody does throw tomatoes at the screen upon you know watching this very video that okay god's got my back um my dog's got my lap, you know, <laughs> but like, like ultimately in the end, I'm not going to be alone. Um, that's the biggest part of it. And then of course the practices that I teach my clients too, around self empathy, holding the sweet parts of myself that so want to make a difference that so want to share that are so scared and want to be accepted. Okay. How do I tend to those parts as well? So in a way it's, I want to say it's both, tending to the very, very human parts of me and cultivating a connection with the divine at the same time. Oh, that is so sweet. Hmm. Yeah. I was just, you. when you said that your dog's got your lap, I'm like, oh, I wish my dog still sat on my lap. Oh. <laughs> you, you still have a puppy, right? Yes. Yeah. How old is the puppy? Well, he's three, but he will be forever my puppy. So. Yeah, I, I know. Exactly. My perpetual puppy. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, that's, that's amazing. Yeah. That's, that's so, so true. Um, mm. and okay. So another, uh, another lesson, you know, in our pre conversation for this recording, um, another lesson you've been learning is about being yourself. Yeah. Even though you have mentors and coaches, uh, and, it's the worst you know, teachers you look up to. So yeah. talk about that. What does that, what does that mean for you? Yeah, there are so many reasons um, to convince ourselves and to convince myself that what I have is not worthy of sharing that so-and-so is already doing it and not just doing it, but doing like an amazing job of it. And um, who the heck am I to put myself out there to think that there's something unique that I have to contribute Um I do have amazing mentors. I do have amazing friends. And there's just lots of amazing people in the world doing great work. So it's not hard to find reasons to knock ourselves down and to be like, mm -mm, I'm just going to you know, keep myself under the carpet, under the bed, whatever, and let somebody else do it. Um, in a way, this comes back to that sense of faith and, and real deep trust that even though, you know, I have my spiritual teacher who's doing, you know, beyond words, amazing work, and I have my friends and I've got, you know, colleagues, et cetera, that there's something unique in here that can only come through me 
and can only come through me risking that vulnerability, um, risking putting myself out there and making a bad impression, it's, you know, having the tomatoes thrown, uh, virtual or otherwise, um, that it's only through this risk taking that there's that the something precious, God given, universe given, you know, dog given, whatever your belief is, um, implanted in me to be to be offered as a contribution to this world. And again, it in, requires a tremendous risk um, in my experience to put my attention and my faith in that trust rather than in all the fear-based beliefs of not nah, so-and-so is already doing it. I'm just going to, you know, keep my head in hiding, um, keep my heart in hiding. So um, all of this truly going into business for myself has been nothing less than a full-on spiritual journey and a spiritual practice. It really comes back to that again and again and again for me. And I'm guessing for so many others as well. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Beautifully said. It's yes. It, it that is actually that is one of the common questions I get actually. It's like, well, uh yeah, who am I uh, when mm -hmm. this brilliant teacher thought leader is already doing it so well right. and has so many people following them, why should any of them decide to read or watch my thing? That's right. Um, but it always surprises me that you know, um there, there is a certain advantage to not being a thought leader or celebrity mm. yet. Um, mm. That people, uh, the advantage is that people feel like they can relate more to us when we share what's going on with us. Fellow human. Yeah, fellow humans. And what insights we have, the sharing of it, there's a certain innocence to it when you're not yet a celebrity or a thought leader that is yeah. um, irreplaceable. And, hey, and, there we go. Yeah. Here, here to being freaking human. Yeah. <laughs> and, and relate toable, relatable. Yes, relatable, right. fa fabulous. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I, I'd love to just spend a few minutes talking about the kind of work you do with your clients and yeah. their, uh, I mean, relationships. There's so much there, obviously. And we have a few minutes only. So is there something, is there a tip or some? Yeah, some insight. Yeah. You want to bring forth. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'd love to see how quickly I can do this. Um, yeah. Okay. So here's the bottom line. The one thing, the single takeaway I would love to offer is for folks in intimate relationships, if you are human, um, more likely than not, you have occasional conflict with your partner. And, um, my experience of what I work with my clients around is how the heck do we disentangle our fundamental needs for understanding, acceptance, for love, you know, belonging, all these beautiful things that are innately in us, these longings from our strategies, our favorite strategies for getting those needs met. And our strategies usually involve our partners. It's I want my partner to understand me. I want my partner to love me. I want my partner to hug me right now. And in my experience, it's disentangling our freaking precious human needs from our favorite strategies for meeting those needs that allows our relationships the spaciousness that they need to thrive. And it restores to us our empowerment and our own sanity. And so two quick tips I want for, for everyone around this is um, when you're in conflict, um, three things. Number one, can you ask yourself, what is it that I need? What am I fundamentally longing for that all human beings need? It's not just you. Respect, care, dignity, support, safety, right, etc. cetera. Um, number two, how else can I get this need met, right? And we've talked a bit about spiritual practice, so I want to go right there again. Um, how can I experience this need being met with my sense of the divine, right? So for me, it's often it comes up um, a need for fundamental acceptance, for knowing that I'm good, right? How can, I, how can I connect with my sense of God and remember I am loved, I am accepted, I am cherished in God's eyes? Um, you can do it with a friend. It doesn't have to be God, a friend or family member. Um, and then the second piece is find Whoever is the young one in you who got triggered, if you're in a fight with your partner, more often than not, there's a young part that's knocking on the door saying, I want help. Mm. Find the young one, put them on your lap, hold them, and let them turn around and face you 
to start to get those needs met. So it's in this case, it's me telling my young parts, sweet Marina, I love you, I accept you, I cherish you, I adore you. And I'm in this process, I'm reclaiming my power, starting to feed myself these needs I've been longing for, rather than taking my claws into my partner's skin and demanding these needs of him. So wow. um, that's the short and sweet version. Yeah. You've just given the overview of like a lifetime's work. Yeah, essentially. <laughs> uh, wow. So, you know, if anybody resonates with this, I hope mm -hmm. uh, they'll reach out to you. Uh, I'm sure you've written something about this on your blog, so folks can go and yeah. read more. Um, but you know, if, if they want to reach out to you for uh, considering, you know, working with you for coaching, um, you can really help somebody unpack that in the context of their own current relationship and mm -hmm. help them to create the exercises and the, you know, the, the customizing these kinds of things for that person, right? To, That's right. To help them implement this so this is beautiful really really good mm. um i would love to ask you if i mean if we have a few more minutes if that's okay okay uh so just a few things in your bio right that i think oh. might, might find interesting um or you know just maybe we've heard these things and i'd love to hear your explanation and what what these things mean so nonviolent mm -hmm. communication nvc so many people have heard the idea i think a lot of people and some people maybe watching this have been trained in it or have taken classes or yeah. read a book. But what does what NVC to you? What does that mean for you? Yeah. Um, oh, I want to have the short and snappy answer here. Yeah, I know, but you've, <laughs> you've done so much work. <laughs> with that. Yeah, it's challenging. I know I, I kind of put you so, on the spot. With this. That's okay. No, but give us, so describe it to somebody who is uh, maybe spiritually aware, you know, maybe yeah. someone who's into mindfulness or or into, into spirituality or into personal growth, but doesn't know a lot about it. Yeah. Actually, I'm describing myself. So. Hey, hey, George. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. great. Yeah. yeah. So the heart of NVC is this notion that everything we say, do, and think is an attempt to meet some universal human need. Right? I've named a few that care, belonging, acceptance, safety, security, etc. And it's through our capacity to lift our, I want to say the veil of judgment from our eyes, lifting that veil of judgment um, from ourselves and off, and off of others and starting to connect with what's the underlying need that's motivating that person or motivating me to do this thing that I'm judging the heck out of, that we start to soften towards ourselves, that we start to cultivate compassion for ourselves. Um, and that then we can begin to empower ourselves with, okay, what are the strategies that I really need? So if I'm upset and in a bad mood and I'm just generally like taking out on my partner and raw, I'm getting on his case about dishes in the sink, you know, um, if I'm asking this question, what's truly important to me? Well, I had a freaking hard day. I'm overwhelmed. I really have a need for, um, spaciousness in my life, which the sink is just one small manifestation of, I could begin to ask. First of all, there's the softening. Oh, God, I really love space. I really love spaciousness. <sighs> all beings need space. I'm not alone in this. This is a good need. <sighs> and then I can ask, how else in my life can I cultivate some spaciousness that's going to go far beyond the dishes in, dishes in the sink? So there's an empowering quality in addition to the um, compassion-inducing quality. That's my short answer. Wow, it's beautiful. And again, there's a lot there to unpack. Yeah. Um, what about the Hakomi method? And I know this, there's yeah. a lot here too, but uh, I think fewer people I've heard of the Hakomi method. Um, what's your, yeah. is something from, about it? Yeah, I so love Hakomi. Um, how I understand and how I work with Hakomi is it's a body-based and mindfulness-based practice that says, you know, whatever I'm acting out in the world, wherever I get stuck, wherever I feel challenged, it typically reflects some false core belief. And it's through addressing those core beliefs and learning to correct them, to replace them with um, ones that serve us and feel empowering to us that we, you know, free ourselves up. But the, the uniqueness of Hakomi in here is that it says it's through slowing down and it's through paying attention to our bodies that we can access these core beliefs. Um, when we're just in our mind, 
we miss something and it's through the slowing down process that the unconscious can present itself. So when I work with clients around, when I sense there's a, a deeper, there's a childhood issue there, I will often use Hakomi to help my client access their, um, their unconscious truths and their unconscious core beliefs that are running the show, but without their um, conscious um, uh, permission <laughs> for these parts to, to, buy, to, to run the show. Um, so it's a really beautiful and graceful method to go about uh, transformation. Um, the farthest thing from many other methods that I've met that feel like very hammery and like whippy and loud thundery. I don't know if any of this is coming through. Um, <laughs> we heard a little bit, yeah. Yeah. Um, it feels very organic and honoring of being and honoring of the speed of being and the way that our bodies naturally um, release our defenses. Mm. Yeah. That's, wow. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. It's, it's cool um, work. Yeah. So uh, just wrapping up this conversation, mm -hmm. how, if somebody is watching this and is resonating with you, um, how do they work with you? What's the next step? What yeah. Do you, how you want to yeah, reach on out? Yeah, I would love to talk with anybody who resonates with anything I've shared. Um, you can check out my website, shamelessheart.com. You can just email me directly, marina at shamelessheart.com. And um, I would love to get to hear from you. Yeah, it's a great, great uh, domain name too, shamelessheart.com. Hey, thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. And just to clarify, you work with women. Yeah, and a few cool men. <laughs> okay, all right. So you're open to that. All right. Yeah. Cool. cool. Yeah. Good. There's good. a few that snuck in there that I who I really enjoy working with too. Very good. Yeah. Well, thank you, Marina, for doing your work. It's um, beautiful, and those who are, you know, I think people in your audience are blessed by your presence. Uh, by your writings, mm. um, by your support, and um, even your Facebook personal timeline is pretty pretty great to follow. Uh, personally, I, <laughs> I like what you, you post there too. Oh, I'm glad. So I'll I'll put the links in there so folks can follow you and connect with you. And uh, thank you, thank you for what you yeah, do. Such a pleasure to be here, George. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs>